Hello everyone. Today we will talk about one of the very fundamental experiments in protein science which was performed by Anfinsen in 1950s and uh, it is called Anfinsen experiment. This experiment uh, was all about uh, relationship between sequence of a protein and its shape. Shape means three dimensional structure of the protein. We know that uh, proteins when they are in solution they adopt a tertiary structure, a globular shape and that is due to hydrophobic effect. Due to repelling forces with water, they are amino acid sequence in the protein which repel water which are non-polar in nature. So those non-polar stretches of protein, they leads to uh, go for hydrophobic effect and that's how a protein acquire a globular shape that is also called native structure of the protein. So from the Anfinsen's experiment, it was concluded that the shape of a protein, the three dimensional structure of a protein is determined by its amino acid sequence. So when proteins are treated with uh, say high temperature or with some high concentration of salts, protein get unfolded, their 3D structure is disrupted and that is because they are intramolecular non-covalent forces and covalent forces in form of disulfide bond which stabilize 3D structure of a protein. If you disrupt them with high temperature or salt concentration or chaotropic agents like urea, protein get denatured. So, protein get unfolded, the native protein is catalytically active but when a protein is unfolded, the catalytic activity is lost. And this process of protein uh, denaturation, protein unfolding is also known as protein denaturation. This is reversible in nature, means if you remove that, uh, for example, if you are using urea to denature protein, when you add urea, protein become unfolded, become denatured, the activity is lost. And if you remove urea, the protein can get back to its native state, native conformation, which is three dimensional structure of that protein. And uh, if we understand the protein folding is a very fascinating and very intricate uh, subject in uh, protein science. So if we understand how a protein fold, we can predict three dimensional structure of any protein when we have just sequence of that protein available. So it's a very important information if you can acquire by protein folding studies. Then uh, by understanding the protein folding, uh, we also can uh, design new proteins which have different functions which are not naturally existing in nature. In Anfinsen experiment, he used three chemicals. One was ribonuclease A, which is an enzyme, a urea, a, which is a denaturing agent of proteins, and beta mercaptanol. Beta mercaptanol is a chemical which breaks disulfide bond in proteins. Ribonuclease A. Ribonuclease A is also known as RNAs A. From uh, bovine pancreas, pancreas, RNAs A was used by Anfinsen. This is uh, a small protein of 124 amino acid long in length and it has 8 cysteine which forms 4 pairs of disulfide bonds which stabilize three dimensional structure of this protein and RNAs A is one of the classic model systems of protein science. Uh, two Nobel prizes have been given on this single protein itself. One Nobel prize was given to Christian Anfinsen in 1972 and uh, that's what we are talking in today's lecture, the experiment given by Anfinsen. And second Nobel Prize was given in 1984 to another American scientist, Bruce Merrifield. Bruce Merrifield devised a method of protein synthesis which is known as solid phase synthesis of proteins and peptides. And using that method, he synthesized ribonuclease A. For that, he also was given Nobel Prize 
in 1984. Urea is a chaotropic agent. Urea, in a, when a protein is treated with urea, urea tend to replace intramolecular hydrogen bonding in protein, which stabilizes the structure of the protein. And also, it uh, replaces water and protein interactions as well. As a result, protein is start opening up, the core of the protein is start exposing to the outside environment, and water molecules start entering to the core of the protein, which is non-polar in nature. That's how urea cause denaturation or unfolding of a protein. Uh, beta mercaptethanol is a reducing agent. It uh, reduces disulfide bonds in a protein. We know that uh, uh, cysteines in protein, they form disulfide bond, which is covalent in nature. And if you treat a protein having disulfide bond with beta mercaptoethanol, this disulfide bond get uh, reduced and free cysteines are produced. So beta mercaptoethanol is a disulfide bond reducing agent which breaks disulfide bond and uh, make the cysteines free which pair in protein to form the linkage. Uh, Enfinson conducted several experiments. So what he did, he took ribonuclease A, this 124 amino acid long RNAs, which is catalytically active in nature. And uh, this protein, when it was treated with 8 molar urea and beta mercaptoethanol, it converted into inactive state. He measured activity of RNAs A in presence of beta mercaptoethanol and 8 molar urea. So what happened? 8 molar urea leads denaturation of the protein, so protein become total unfolded, and beta mercaptoethanol it 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 broken down for all four disulfide bonds which are existing in proteins. So that leads to complete denaturation of the protein. If you do not add beta mercaptoethanol here, and only 8 molar urea treatment is given to the protein, protein will unfold, but because uh, disulfide bonds are covalent in nature, they, they have no effect of uh, urea. So they are not broken down. If disulfide bonds are not broken down, complete denaturation of protein is not possible. So by using both the reagents, both the chemicals, uh, the protein was completely denatured and it has no catalytic activity. Now, if 8 molar urea is removed, removed first, if 8 molar urea is removed first and protein is sent for slow oxidation, slow oxidation means uh, the beta mercaptoethanol is slowly removed from the uh, uh, protein solution. So what happened? The protein regained catalytic activity. It means protein also got folded. <clears throat> but if 8 molar urea is there and protein is gone for fast oxidation, means beta mercaptoethanol is completely removed. So, so in both the experiments, the removal of beta mercaptoethanol varies in case of first experiment, urea was removed first before beta mercaptoethanol, so complete activity was regained. In another experiment, from the denatured state of uh, RNAs A, beta mercaptoethanol was removed first, 8 molar urea was still there. And he found that in this situation, the protein was inactive. So if 8 molar urea is there and beta mercaptoethanol is removed, the protein was not active. That's what he observed. But if beta mercaptoethanol is again added and 8 molar urea is removed, so only beta mercaptoethanol present here, urea is removed by dialysis method, so the protein again regained the activity. So these observation he explained because from here, if you remove beta mercaptoethanol first, it means it will lead to oxidation of disulfide bond. 8 molar urea is there in the protein sample, protein is denatured, is in random coil, and if you remove beta mercaptoethanol, 
the cysteines whichever is falling in vicinity it will form pair will get oxidized that will be non specific pairing of the uh, cysteines in disulfide bond in the protein structure because these positions of cysteines and disulfide bond they are highly specific for a protein for example in this case if 26th position cysteine is forming pair with 84 position cysteine it it cannot be exchanged with another positions so that's that's very highly specific so in this case of removal of beta mercaptoethanol first the cysteines which are falling in close vicinity they get oxidized that leads to non specific link disulfide bond linkages and because disulfide bonds are covalent bond and they are linked with non specific cysteine partners that leads to uh, random coil the protein remains in the random coil it, it doesn't get converted into the functional shape the native conformation and that's why there is no activity but if you if you add beta mercaptoethanol again and 8 molar urea is still there so beta mercaptoethanol can break all these non specific linkages of cysteines in disulfide bond and when you remove 8 molar urea the protein will form globular shape so protein has folded back it has renatured but 8 molar urea is still there that ensure there is no disulfide bond formation and the protein is still active so from here few observations can be drawn the first observation is that 8 molar urea and beta mercaptoethanol they do not change primary structure of the protein primary structure the sequence is the only thing which is not getting influenced by presence of these two chemicals these two chemicals are only breaking intramolecular forces which stabilize 3d structure of the protein so it means because protein denaturation is a reversible process so this information of protein folding lies in the sequence of the protein in all this process it means a protein folds because of sequence of amino acid in the protein so that's why if you add urea protein will be denatured after removing urea it will renature back to the native state only thing which remain constant in the experiment is the primary structure of the protein and that's how enfinson could conclude that primary structure of a protein determines three dimensional structure or tertiary structure or shape of that protein so that was very remarkable uh, discovery of that time then second observation if beta mercaptoethanol is removed first protein forms non uh, non specific uh, disulfide bond linkages that leads to inactive conformation of the protein but if you add 8 molar urea and if you add, sorry if you add a, a, a beta mercaptoethanol here 8 molar urea is still there those non specific bonds are broken down and when you remove the urea alone protein get back to the native structure it means that beta mercaptoethanol the disulfide bond formation they do not contribute to activity of the protein because if disulfide bonds are not formed and protein acquire 3d structure the shape the protein is still show showed activity so that's how he, he could say that disulfide bond they do not contribute to the protein folding to acquire the native shape of the protein but they do stabilize 3d structure of the protein and those were very very important observations what enfinson made and if we summarize them um, primary structure of a protein determines folding how protein is going to fold what shape a protein is going to have in space that is determined by sequence of the protein then function of a protein is dependent on its three dimensional structure if you if you disrupt a structure like uh, by treating urea the three dimensional structure was disrupted function also was lost so function of a protein is dependent on its structure three dimensional structure of the protein 
then uh, disulfide bonds are consequence of folding disulfide bonds are formed after protein has folded they cannot form before fo uh, protein folding has taken place uh, that's what Enfinson could uh, infer because if they are formed first before protein folding has taken place it will lead to random coil because of non-specific pairing of cysteines so disulfide bonds are uh, oxidized when protein folding has taken place and after protein folding has occurred whichever cysteine is falling in vicinity of whatever cysteine that get oxidized and form disulfide linkage and uh, disulfide bonds don't help in folding but they do stabilize 3d structure of the protein that was another observation and uh, native structure is thermodynamically most stable the folded state of the protein is thermodynamically most stable one which is also functional that also was concluded from the experiment and it has great uh, implications in protein science because if we understand no today we understand that uh, 3d structure of a protein is important for its function so a function of a protein is determined by tertiary structure or shape of the protein and we also know from Enfinson experiment that primary structure is responsible for tertiary structure of the protein it means if if you want to change function of a protein you simply you can ch make changes in the primary structure of the protein that's what can be done so using this information this knowledge new enzymes can be designed new enzymes which are not existing in nature they have novel functions so those kind of enzymes could be designed and uh, stable more stability of the protein also can be enhanced for example if a protein is lesser stable it can withstand less temperature so you can increase stability of the protein by changing amino acid sequence primary structure of the protein so the 3d structure is more stable for example if a protein you need to is th these are the parts of protein engineering discipline so if you a protein you want to make it more stable it means you need to add more intramolecular attractive forces for example you can introduce disulfide bond in a protein so that protein become more stable it, it can withstand higher temperature and more harsh environment then uh, design of therapeutic protein this information also can be used in designing of uh, therapeutic proteins for example a protein if a if a therapeutics protein and you want to make it have longer time it stay longer time in the body so changes in the protein sequence can be done new groups in the protein can be added so it can remain stable in body for longer time to show its uh, effects if you like the lectures given on this channel i i request you to subscribe the channel and enjoy more lectures in future thank you